I have a question about the most important issue of our day. And it's, it's about this Zoomer or maybe millennial girl whining about getting fired. And I'll hold my question until, I assume you've seen it, it went totally viral. But I'll hold my question until after she makes her display. Hi, Brittany. Hi. Thanks for meeting with me and Rosie. Um, so she's writing on here. She's an accounting today. sec at Cloud Flare. We finished our evaluation of company. performance. She, she writes her name here. She goes, I want to stand up for myself. What do I have to lose? We've decided to part ways with you. Yeah, I'm going to stop you right there. Sure. Um, so I started August 25th. I've been on a three month ramp. And then it was three weeks of. Enjoy December, the trauma, she writes. And then a week of Christmas. Her trauma, I guess, is what she's and talking about. And then here about. we are. She's writing these things um, on the TikTok that she posts. I have had the highest activity amongst my team um, since I've started. I have had three contracts out, done a really great job managing my deals up until the very end that decided not to close last minute. Um, so I don't think that that makes a lot of sense for me in my Cloudflare journey here so far. Wow. It goes on and on and on. Everyone's talking about how she's an entitled young woman. She doesn't get it. Are you kidding me? You buttercup, you little snowflake, get with the program. That's one take. Then the, the other take is, yeah, corporate America, there's something really screwy about it. And she's probably right. And it's crazy how clinical her firing was. And that is wrong. And she, yeah, our economy is kind of messed up. And fair enough. My take is not either of those. My question is, why does everyone film everything now? Why? It's kind of ironic, I guess, because I'm filming a thing right now. I'm saying my thoughts on a camera to you. But one, that's my job. And, and two, you know, it's a, I'm not filming, you know, every traumatic event in my life. I don't think I'm filming any traumatic events in my life. I don't want to. I don't want to expose that. I'm not even filming when I go make pasta. I'm not, some of you have asked me to do that, but I don't really do that. I'm not, the only time I really film in my house, if we're not snowed in, is when I'm making little ukulele videos. Why is everyone filming? Your first instinct, you see someone getting beaten up on the street. So I got to film this. You, you, you get fired from your job. You know you're about to get fired. You know it's going to be a traumatic experience. You actually write in the comment, enjoy the trauma. And you say, yeah, you know what I got to do? I got to stream my firing, my humiliation. What has gone wrong with people that they do that? It's, it's a, it's a total obliteration of private life. To what she's actually doing here, it's a huge mistake. She might be in the right. Maybe the company just made a mistake or they're just laying her off. They don't really care. They shouldn't have hired her in the first place. She was doing a fine job. Maybe that's the case she's making. Or maybe she's a huge problem, which would seem to be the case because of look what she's doing here. Can you? This woman's never going to get a job again. She'll probably have a better life because of that. I actually don't think that working in the widget factory is the, the most wonderful and joyful way of life. And I think that feminists duped a lot of women into thinking it is. And now we have an economy where women feel that they have to work. And in some cases, they would face real financial problems if they didn't work. And those are all legitimate problems. She's certainly never going to get a job again, though, once people Google her name that she put out there. But why? Why would you, why would you obliterate your private life like that? Well, you know, actually, just occurs to me, it gets back to what we were talking about earlier with Twilight and Kristen Stewart saying, all those uh, homophobic things, even though she's, I guess, kind of a lesbian. And it, it, it's a total upending of the natural order. Part of the reason that Dante puts his teacher, Brunetto Latini, in the circle of the sodomites, it's not, I don't know what the guy did in his private life. It's not even really necessarily about that. It's because Brunetto Latini was a very famous poet who sought immortality in fame and, and who, whose poetry, Dante seems to accuse, uh, uh, was disconnected from true ends. It was totally in, self-indulgent and sterile and not fruitful. And we do that today. We do that. You know why this lady is filming herself? Because we don't have kids anymore, I think. That's probably why. 
not just because she's working and that, you know, when, when women are working, it makes them less likely to have kids, but because we want to be immortal. And the, the, the devil tricks us into thinking that the best way to become immortal is to become a big celebrity or to, I don't know, write a really great book and that's how your name is going to live forever. That, that's not actually how we become. The, the natural way to have immortality is to pass on your genes. It, it's to pass on your genes literally, biologically, or at the very least spiritually, to be a spiritual father and a mentor. And in fact, that can be more important. But it's not, it's not to get your name in lights. I get it's kind of ironic. I got a big light here and I'm filming myself and I, you know, I, I have a public career. But it's not the most important thing that I do, not even close to it. It's not, that all has to be in service of something else. And it, it was in our society for a while. And even when people, you know, people would do all sorts of sins for all of history, it's a fallen world. But we at least had the right sense of that. We had the right sense that the, the natural way to have immortality is to have a family. And the supernatural way given to us by supernatural grace to have immortality is to follow God and follow the only begotten son of God who is incarnate and who is crucified and is resurrected on the third day and redeems us of our sins. And if we have faith in him, we might not perish, but have everlasting life. That was how, that's how you actually get immortality on the natural and supernatural level. But we get distracted all along the way. Oh, I know how I'll get it. I'll write a pretty poem. I know how I'll get it. I'll become an Instagram influencer. I was talking to sweet little Elisa. She was telling me, because she, she scrolls a little bit more on that stuff than I do. My, my scrolling is Twitter. Her scrolling is more like Insta and that kind of stuff. She said, there are people who, they'll post really humiliating videos of themselves. You know, looking ugly and, you know, like eating gross things. And in this case, you know, experiencing the trauma of being fired. And but they'll say, wow, I'm so pleased that I'm an influencer. Wow. <laughs> That's something else. You're right. You, you get that 15 minutes of fame, but it's 15 minutes. Even if you're the most famous guy in the world, it's 15 minutes, you know, and then it's gone. There, there is a more enduring way to have everlasting life. The final Iowa caucus polls have Trump with the biggest lead that he has had yet. Remember, the DeSantis campaign has staked the whole campaign on Iowa at this point. Initially, they were running a nationwide race when things were looking quite good, and DeSantis was the clear number two, at least, maybe was able to challenge Trump. Uh, the polls just didn't move. It's not that DeSantis is a, is a bad candidate. It's not that he's a bad governor. He's a great governor. I really admire the guy. I think he's great. I think the campaign has made some missteps, but even if it were the greatest campaign ever, I just didn't think it was in the cards, as I observed from the beginning, and I hate to say I told you so. Uh, so, because of that, they put all of their resources in Iowa, and it does not appear to have paid off. This latest poll uh, has come out, uh, Trump at, at 48%, uh, Haley at 20%. So Trump's got a 28% lead, 28-point lead over his next nearest rival. Haley at 20 over DeSantis at 16 is pretty shocking. I'm somewhat skeptical of that, that Haley is actually going to outperform DeSantis in Iowa. I guess it could, could happen. Uh, Vivek at 8%, which is considerably lower. I still think pretty good numbers for a guy that no one had ever heard of a year ago. I think he's done a, a very good job in this campaign, and he's been able to not have himself be totally marginalized like a, a Andrew Yang type candidate or like a, even a Ron Paul type of candidate. He's, he's avoided that. He's a, he's a very sharp guy. He's very disciplined, and he might outperform even this poll. Asa Hutchinson still in it, 1%. I, I didn't realize he was still in the race, but I guess he is. And then there's a guy named Binkley. He showed up on the poll. I've never heard of Binkley, but Binkley's in it. And who knows? Maybe he'll outperform and get uh, a point and a half. Who knows? There could be a surprise. It seems unlikely, uh, but we'll find out. The, the votes will be cast right now. Man, that was a great clip, huh? I agree. Make sure that you ring that bell. Subscribe to the Michael Knowles Show podcast. We'll see you next time.